Hello, I'm Ken Milne, and these are 10 papers in 10 minutes. Go. Paper number one. Calcium has a theoretical benefit on patients with cardiac arrest as it has ionotropic and vasopressor effects. Previous small randomized control trials have shown no superiority to calcium for return of spontaneous circulation, or ROSC. However, the point estimate did favor calcium. The COCA trial looked at adult patients with out-of-hospital cardiac arrests, or OCAs, who received at least one dose of epinephrine. Patients received either calcium chloride or placebo. The key result? No statistical difference in sustained ROSC. The point estimate for survival was actually worse in those getting calcium. Also, there was no difference in 30-day survival or 30-day survival with good neurologic function. Bottom line? No routine calcium required for out-of-hospital cardiac arrests. 2. Large chest tubes have traditionally been used for the treatment of patients with traumatic hemothorax, but are they necessary? This was a multi-center, non-inferiority, unblinded, randomized trial of 199 hemodynamically stable adult patients suffering a traumatic hemothorax or hemoneumothorax requiring drainage. They compared a small 14 French pigtail catheter to a large, a 28 to 32 French chest tube. Key result, small tubes were non-inferior to large tubes. Bottom line, bigger isn't necessarily better. It's reasonable to offer a small pigtail catheter instead of a large bore chest tube for the evacuation of a traumatic hemothorax in a hemodynamically stable patient. 3. Acute low back pain is one of the most common and challenging presentations in clinical practice. Nothing seems to work really well. This includes pharmaceuticals like acetaminophen, NSAIDs, or steroids, and also non-pharmaceutical treatments also lack good evidence of efficacy like chiropractic, acupuncture, and physiotherapy. This randomized control trial looked at seven different skeletal muscle relaxants and compared them to placebo in adult patients with non-traumatic, non-radicular, musculoskeletal acute low back pain who'd already received an NSAID. Key result? All patients had better pain scores at one week, but none were statistically better than placebo. Bottom line? Relax. Don't use them. And by them, I mean skeletal muscle relaxants, routinely in acute low back pain. 4. There have been long-standing debates about which intravenous fluid is best for volume resuscitation in critically ill patients. The BASICS trial last year showed no statistical difference between type or rate of fluid infused in critically ill patients. The PLUS trial was a double-blind, parallel group, randomized control trial comparing plasma light to normal saline in adult ICU patients needing fluid resuscitation. Key result? No statistical difference in all-cause mortality at 90 days. So the bottom line? A balanced solution was not a plus in critically ill ICU patients. Paper number five. Dr. Paul Merrick got the critical world all excited when he claimed that a vitamin C cocktail, including vitamin C, hydrocortisone, and thiamine, as a possible cure for sepsis. His position was based partly upon a retrospective before and after study he conducted at his own hospital. The Lovett trial was a multi-center randomized placebo-controlled trial of 863 adult patients admitted to the ICU with suspected infection and receiving vasopressor therapy. They compared IV vitamin C versus placebo. Key result? Vitamin C did statistically worse for the primary composite outcome of death or persistent organ dysfunction. There was no statistical difference between individual components of the composite outcome. The bottom line? The juice is just not worth the squeeze when it comes to vitamin C. 
And this actually agrees with multiple other randomized control trials that have looked at this issue, including vitamins, Axe, and Victus. 6. Buccal fractures of the distal radius are the most common fractures seen in children. Despite being a common injury, they are often managed differently. The FORCE trial was a multi-center, randomized, non-blinded, equivalence trial of almost 1,000 children aged 4 to 15 years of age. Key result? A soft wrap was equivalent to rigid immobilization for pain on day 3. Bottom line? Wrap them up. It's very reasonable to treat distal radius buccal fractures with soft bandages, immediate discharge, and don't require routine follow-up. And this agrees with multiple other studies done over the past couple of decades. 7. The issue of uh, thrombolysis for acute ischemic stroke has been debated in the literature for almost three decades. While only two randomized control trials using TPA have reported superiority for their primary outcome, NINS in 1995 and ECAS-3 in 2008, both have been questioned. Many places are now moving on to TNK. The ACT trial was a well-done Canadian, pragmatic, multicenter, open-label, registry-linked, randomized control, non-inferiority trial. Adult patients with disabling acute ischemic stroke treated within 4.5 hours last seen well and compared TPA to TNK. Key result? TNK was non-inferior to altoplase or TPA in stroke patients treated within 4.5 hours of symptom onset for the primary outcome of good neurologic function, which was a modified rank and scale score of 0 to 1 at 3 to 6 months. It was around 35%. Bottom line, we need to remain skeptical about thrombolysis for acute ischemic stroke, and this trial does not tell us if TPA or TNK is better than placebo. 8. Debate has been going on for years about what's the best fluid and best rate of fluid for a variety of conditions. This includes DKA, sepsis, hyponatremia, trauma, and other critically ill patients. The traditional management of acute pancreatitis has been IV fluids and analgesia. The waterfall trial looked at adults with acute pancreatitis with moderate or aggressive fluid replacement with Ringer's lactate. Key result? No statistical difference in progression to moderately severe or severe acute pancreatitis. Bottom line? You don't need to be aggressive with IV fluid resuscitation in adult patients with moderate acute pancreatitis. 9. A couple of small studies 20 years ago claimed efficacy of therapeutic hypothermia for out-of-hospital cardiac arrest, or OCAs. The original TTM trial compared 33 to 36 degrees Celsius for OCAs and found no statistical difference. TTM2 then looked at 33 versus 37.5 degrees Celsius, or normal therapy, in OCAs and also found no statistical difference for their primary outcome. This was an open-label, multi-center, randomized trial comparing TTM, or targeted temperature management, for 24 hours to normotherapy in in in-hospital cardiac arrest with decreased level of consciousness, or a GCS less than 9. Key result? No statistical difference in all-cause mortality at 6 months. It was around 72%. Bottom line? We still don't have good evidence for cooling these in-hospital cardiac arrest patients, and we are eagerly waiting for the TTM3 trial comparing normotherapy to no temperature control in out-of-hospital cardiac arrest patients. 10. How much high-level evidence do we have to support what we do in emergency medicine? Well, this was an umbrella review looking at systematic reviews and meta-analyses of things we do in emergency medicine. They identified 431 meta-analyses with more than 3,000 outcomes and 80% of those outcomes coming from randomized control trials. They found that only 2.8%, yes, less than 3%, had high-level evidence of an important effect size. This does not mean what we do does not matter or doesn't work. It means we just don't have high-quality evidence of what we do does have an important patient-oriented outcome. Bottom line, 
We need to do better research by asking the right questions, using the right methods, with patient-oriented outcomes so patients get the best care based on the best evidence. So in conclusion, be skeptical of anything you hear, even if you heard it from me.